Hey everyone, I just finished drill weekend, so I did not film a vlog this weekend. My goal was to do 30 days straight. Um, I didn't consider drill weekend. <laughs> On drill weekends, I am completely wiped. And this particular drill weekend, I got promoted. And so I actually went out one evening. I went out two evenings, which is unheard of. I am a homebody and I almost never go out, but I went out two evenings and um, was working during the day. And so it was just crazy weekend as, as drill weekends always are. But um, today was my uh, oldest daughter's eighth birthday and Super Bowl Sunday, of course. Um, and I just saw what the final score was. We were watching um, some of her videos from when she was a baby, so we missed the last part of the game, but man, what a comeback. And I am not a big sports fan, but I can certainly appreciate talent and tenacity and perseverance and all those qualities that they have to possess to be able to, to have a comeback like that. It was incredible. We watched the game, the, pretty much the first half, um, watched the halftime show, and Lady Gaga came out, and I just, I have never been a Lady Gaga fan. I'm, I don't listen to very much of the popular music, Top 40 type, and so I... <sighs> But every time I see her, I just, I cannot help but admire her. And if you saw my, my vlog from a week or two ago, um, where I was talking about how these artists, and for that matter, these athletes, and they all at some point have to say, you know what, I am going to be me no matter what anybody else says. <clears throat> my parents may not approve my... Um, friends may not approve. I have to be true to who I am and I have to not be afraid to be thought of as weird or different. And if I if I had come to that conclusion for myself 20 years earlier, if I had come to that conclusion at 18 instead of almost 38, I don't live with regrets, but I do wonder how things would have been different because I'm just now at that point where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to be who I am and do what I need to do and not worry about what other people have to say about it. And it's it's been really cool um one of the things that helps me not have any regrets is being able to instill that in my kids now. And so perfect example is that my oldest daughter, I find, I feel kind of emotional. <laughs> I don't know. It's been, it's just been one of those days I've been kind of, and I don't even think it has anything to do with my daughter's birthday. I think it's just, I'm just so passionate about people shaking off the expectations of others and just doing what they know they're supposed to do. It's so scary. That's why you don't do it. But What's the alternative? To do nothing? No. No. That's no alternative. Mm -mm. My daughter told us probably a year ago that we, start, we started noticing it and so we talked about it. She doesn't like cake. Well, every little girl has a birthday cake, right? Gotta have the cake and the icing and little characters all over it and everything. And I did that for her for the first seven years. And last year I I got her a cake, what I what you know she thought she wanted at the time. And she took a few bites of it and she was done with it. And that's when it the discussion came up, like, do you just not really like cake? She doesn't. So had had we not been tuned in enough to to realize that we could have continued pushing off the normal thing on her for who knows how long and so we were like great if you don't like cake no problem what do you want instead she wanted an apple pie 
great. That's just fine. So we had apple pie and she wanted broccoli cheese soup for her for her um birthday meal. We let them pick. So in my family, let me back up a little bit. In my family, we don't do big birthday parties. Um we have noticed that the birthday child at these birthday parties that we've gone to in the past they're rarely having any fun they're overwhelmed they're not used to having that much attention centered on them the parents are stressed out because I've spent all this time planning and making sure everything is put together and it's just usually everybody looks miserable <laughs> So we're like, you know what? That's a lot of money to be miserable. And so what we do for our children is we buy them a few gifts. We have a pretty small budget because we don't emphasize stuff. And we let them pick out a movie if they want to watch a movie. And we let them pick what they want for their meal and what they want for their dessert. And anything that they request that day that's within reason, you bet. We try to do it. So that's what we did today after I got home from drill and Katie wanted to put the pie in the oven herself and wanted to help go get the soup that she had requested that was from a restaurant and we brought it home and it was like, it's the best. When you finally are willing to embrace that something is not a good fit for you and you're willing to just say, I'm willing to let that go. It is awesome. She had, she said, this is the best birthday ever. We had broccoli cheese soup and a frozen apple pie and watched old baby videos. <laughs> and that was like, that was so great to her. If we had tried to make her have a birthday party and you know, and this is not necessarily what works for every family, but this is just what has worked very well for us. If we if we keep putting the shoving the, the normal thing down her throat, she she's gonna grow up thinking that that's what's expected, and we don't want that of our children. I don't want them. I want them to grow up being weird. I'm gonna make sure it says be weird. Wait for it. I want you to be weird. I want to be, I mean, I'm already pretty weird, but I want to be more weird. God made us to be an individual and we spend so much of our life trying to fit in. What a waste. What a waste of the gifts and talents that he's given us. What a waste of time. What a waste of energy, a waste of resources, buying stuff that you don't even like to impress people you don't even like. It's just so stupid and we do it, myself included. I just sick of it. I have enjoyed these last few weeks of forcing myself to be uncomfortable. have enjoyed that so much more than any time that I've tried to fit in. There's, n there's no, there's nothing good in trying to be something that you're not. And at first, you don't know who you are. Right now, if you're, if you've been sucked into a lifetime of fitting in, you have no clue who you are. I'm just now starting to figure out who I am. And I'm happier and everything, like, it's stressful, it's scary, but the reward, the, the intrinsic value is so worth it. It's so worth it. And I just, you know, I was thinking one day about how, you know, God's given me this gift for compassion. And, you know, if, if nothing else, if you watch one of my videos, if nothing else, you know I'm sincere. It shows all over my face and I know it does because that's a gift that he has given me. Compassion, sincerity, encouragement, those are my gifts. If I'm not using that, it is a slap in his face. Why did I bother blessing you with these gifts and talents if you're not going to use them?
It was a waste. And when I think about it that way, I'm like, <sighs> I am so sorry for all those years that I did not because I was scared. I'm still scared. It's, it's scary to put yourself out there and to be who you really are because what if people don't like who you really are? It hits a little closer than if you're being, if you're being something that you're really not and someone doesn't like you, it's like, I don't care. But when you're, when you're being raw and open and somebody doesn't like you, it hurts a lot. But it's going to happen. Someone's not going to like you. You can't, you, you can't please everybody. You don't want to please everybody. That's what you've already been doing for your whole life, right? That didn't work. It's just stress. <sighs> Be weird. It's way, way better. See you tomorrow.